Hi everyone. I'm I'm super excited to be the person to introduce my friend Sabrina Sedan. She is a performance engineer. She loves talking and writing about ways to make sites faster. I met Sabrina at WordCamp US in San Diego, and she's a huge part of the WordCamp Europe um, volunteer uh, works, putting on their, their WordCamp, which is huge. You know, it's like 2,000 plus people, and she's been doing that since 2018, and she's currently on the planning committee for Greece as well. So. Put that on your calendar it's in june um she's going to talk about something super important which is a reason why your your core web vitals are not passing and you know it's super important to make sure your website's fast and she's just a wonderful person and you know that because a dog named smoothie <laughs> so anyway hands together for sabrina introduction ever. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming to my talk. Let me find the place where I'm not blinded. Um, right. At least we have one screen working. Hello? Better? Cool. Um, all right. All right. <laughs> but we have one screen at least. So thank you everyone for coming for coming to my talk. One single reason why your core web vitals are not passing. My name is Sabrina Zidan, and I'm a performance engineer, and I speed up WordPress websites uh, for work every day and for fun also during nights. Um, I used to work in WP Rocket and then in uh, XWP. Uh, it's a development agency special specializing in performance uh, for enterprises. Um, I love uh, swimming, I, I like coffee, and also I love contributing to WordPress community. One of the ways I contribute to WordPress community is by organizing events like this, and smaller and larger. Uh, I'm an organizer in my hometown in Kiev. Um, since uh, the war started, I spent some time, quite some time in the US, so I started a meetup group there in uh, Richmond, where I was spending time uh, in Virginia. I'm also a WordCamp Europe uh, organizer, and this is my second year in a row when I am leading a content team for WordCamp Europe. Content team is responsible for all talks, workshops, panels, all the content at WordCamp Europe. And this year, uh, this year we've got a lot of applications. I'm wondering if I can. We, this year we've got a lot of applications uh, related to artificial intelligence, obviously. Um, we've, we are going to have some panels and lightning talks and something. And during all this talk, someone asked me, do you think, do you, Sabrina, think that at some point AI might be, shall I be pointing there? Sorry. I'm sorry, I think they are not in sync. Okay. So uh, someone asked me, do you think that your work can be done by AI at some point. And I said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and it's not because uh, I'm some kind of genius or something, or performance is so hard or anything. No, I think it's, um, uh, and it's not because of the area of my work. Um, I think it depends. I think it's a dreaded question that all of us have if my work can be done by AI at some point. I think it depends on the work that you are doing. If you are writing code or if you are putting uh, things together, if you are just writing text or something, I think, yes, you can be replaced by AI. But if you are solving problem, there is no way AI can replace you anytime soon, at least, because it's on us, on human beings, to um, identify the problem that we want to solve. And then the solution of the problem can go to AI, I think. So what is problem solving in general and in performance? First of first, to solve the problem, you need to identify the problem. You need to know exactly the problem that you are solving. Then 
you need to investigate the possible cause of this problem, right? And then you need to find the way to fix it, actually, to find the fix and to apply it. So um, AI cannot do the first two. I, AI cannot identify the problem. This is your work to identify the problem. And the fix and to apply it. That's what, what AI or Google can do for, for, uh, for you. And you should be using tools to find uh, the fixes. I think the main problem with, uh, I've been doing performance for eight years now, and I think that the main problem with performance is that um, developers and non-developers tend to apply fixes before they know the problem. So the very usual scenario that I see, someone would run PageSpeed Insights test, see the list of recommendations, from Google, from software. And they would just go one by one, like I'm supposed to do. What is avoid an excessive uh, DOM size? And you're Googling, what is that? How do I fix it? And so on and so forth. And you go one by one trying to figure out what you can do to improve the, your website loading times. This is, this is not solving a problem. This is just marking the check boxes. This is not solving. Like when you track performance in anything, um, not performance, when you try to track, keep track on something, you can use different tools. You can use checkboxes, you can use graphs, you can use loading bars or something. So for example, if you go to the, if you're putting together your backpack for the North Pole, checkboxes is a good idea. You want to make sure that you've taken everything that you might need there and you, that, that you didn't miss a single but with performance it just doesn't work the checkbox what does work is numbers and graphs so um, to work on performance the first thing to keep in mind that you need to address numbers you need to have a starting point then you do something and then you have the point where you now after you did something to compare with this is uh, i see a lot of frustration um from um developers who tried to um learn performance and um it uh, didn't work out as well as they expected because they don't see a positive feedback. They're doing something, they're not getting results, they're thinking that performance is some kind of black box that only chosen ones can open, something. But it's, not, it's nothing like this. It's just the way how you look at it. And if you look at it as perspective, you can see that, okay, it was li like this, I did this, I got these results, hooray! Like, yes, we're really doing this. I use a lot of graphs and uh, numbers in my daily work this is the example that i'm doing for clients uh, like i would measure uh, numbers um, at the starting point then i would measure numbers at the end point and then i would do another column in spreadsheet with the percentage how how much it improved and this what gives me motivation personally me motivation to um, go further and to keep learning, to work on this and um, uh, to get this positive feedback from my work. So to summarize, to solve the problem, you must identify what the problem is first. Then you need to research for possible causes. Then only after you can apply the fix to this problem that you identified. And just remember, to measure results of your work in numbers, not in checkboxes. So, you might want to leave after this slide. One single reason why your core web vitals are not passing is because you are, <laughs> you are solving, you are not solving the right problem. So, it's that simple. It's very, very simple. Um, but let's see how to identify the right problem then. How we can do it? The first thing, the first question um, that I would ask myself when I start working on the project, does the problem exist at all? 
I have, uh, I'm from Ukraine, right? Uh, I have a uh, sunflower seeds here from a home country that I'm willing to give away to the person who will first answer this question right. Does the problem exist at all? We have two cases here. Number one and number two. Which one? Where the problem does exist and why? Sorry? <laughs> number one and number two. Kami knows the answer. Okay. I'm sorry. No, I, 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 I'm really sorry, it's not so visible, but maybe someone from the first rows can see. No, no, not accessibility. All right. Good. Tells with performance on which, yes, where the problem with performance exists. Yeah, on one of those, there is a problem with performance, on another, there is no. I really hope, yes. Sorry? Um, categories. All right, I'll, I'll give the answer. I just think that it's not visible. No, it's enough data in both, on both sides. Yes? It's different sides. Yes, yes, this is it. Thank you so much. This is for you. <laughs> you, you are sitting closer. Yes, if you look, so um, here in the circles, we have page speed insights uh, numbers, right? But a little bit up, we have core web vitals assessment. And on first, on, on our first side, it's past, it's green, past. And on the second one, <laughs> and on the second one, it wasn't passing. So in page speed insights, you have this score, like large, large, large number in the large uh, circle that you you are looking at the first in the first place, right? But this is page speed insights is lab tool. It's not measuring your real user experience. What is measuring your real user experience is core web vitals. To know your core web vitals, you can go to Google Search Console, for example. I'll show it in a bit if uh, I will be able to. But um, it's also mentioned in the core web vitals section in PageSpeed Insights. If you go to page speed and size, I can see that some some people are doing it right now. If you go to page speed and size website and you run the test, there is a small section there, core web vital assessment, and it pulls data from uh, Chrome uh, user experience report, which is report about real users experience on your website. What real users have on your website from their locations, from their devices, with their internet connection. This is what reflect what if you if your core web vitals are passing, if you have any issues, this is where you should be paying attention to. So if your core web vitals are passing, just like on the first screen, uh, on the first screenshot, all right. <laughs> if it's passing. 
nothing needed from you. you. You can go have a beer or something. There is nothing to do there on that website, and it doesn't matter how long PageSpeed Insights scores are. If Core Web Vitals are passing, if Core Web Vitals that reflect your real user experience, not your, your visitors' real user experience on the website, are not passing, they're failing, this is the start of our work. Then we'll start work on the problem. Yes, we have a problem, we'll admit. It's 6669. And, and the same pin for all my credit cards. <laughs> All right, so while working on performance, mind, mind the gap, mind the gap between lab tests and reality, because reality is core web vitals. And lab, there are a lot of tools for lab uh, assessment, and I will we'll talk about them in a bit, but you should be keeping this in mind that lab is not real user experience, and if lab are, uh, results are low, there is no problem. If real user experience is not passing, there is a problem, and we should be doing something about this. Now, when we when we <clears throat> identified that there is really a problem, we need to specify it. What does it mean core web vitals are not passing? There are three components of core web vitals currently. It's largest content full paint, it's um, cumulative layout shift, and first input delay, you know this uh, this letters, right? LCP, CLS, FAD. So you need to know what you are working on now. You need to identify one problem and know what you are trying to fix right now. The website might have a lot of issues. A lot of things might not be passing on desktop, on mobile. Everything can be not passing. But you need to extract one problem at a time and try to solve one problem uh, in one go. How to do this? So, Google Search Console, if you are not using it uh, to monitor your performance, to, to learn about uh, your website, you should be doing this. In uh, Google Search Console, you go to Core Web Vitals section, and then you have their mobile and desktop, and then you can go and see what is not passing and at what levels. For example, in this example, I'm going to mobile, because mobile is not passing, I'm checking CLS issues, and then this is important thing that haven't been there a year ago, but now it's there, and it's super handy, especially for CLS issues. Um, how do I replay it? Give me a second. Maybe, oop. So if you go down uh, to the um, to the exact section, there will be an example of URL, example URL representing this issue. Not all pages on your website will be having the same issues. All pages might be having different issues because you are dif using different templates for all pages across the website. But then you can go to URL, click on it, and, the, and it will be a group of URLs. And then on the right side, there will be a list of URLs of this group with numbers, with values for them, for layout shift and for um, largest contentful paint. And this is an important, um, uh, an important new feature that um, uh, Google Search Console introduced, because it gives you the opportunity to see the difference between those pages that are passing versus those that are not passing. And sometimes, this stage takes me like 80% uh, of my work. It's just this, identifying the problem. So <clears throat> if you go there and you can see, for example, that this group of URLs, say it's uh, the same template like a uh, blog post or recipe or something, this uh, these recipes are passing and these recipes are not passing, then you can open them um, in the browser, in lab tools, I'll talk about it in a bit, and you can compare how different, and it's easy knowing that this is passing very easy to see what is the different, what's different between in one template you are using um, YouTube video 
above the fold, uh, in another you are not. And from there you can go to, you can actually make, ac make actions to, to um, fix it. So this, then the result of all this will be uh, the problem I am um, actually resolve now, uh, one problem at a time, right? The problem I'm, I'm look to resolve now is largest contentful paint and specifically where on mobile, on desktop. And now, and you will note this value that is that you have currently, that is now such and such. The, all this information is coming from Google Search Console, right? And then there, there you will have a specific URL that is representing the group of URLs that are not passing. This will be like the, the starting point where you can start. The next question is, am I able to reproduce the issue that my users have in lab? In lab meaning using tools. Am I able to reproduce it? We need to reproduce it, to track it, and to be able to improve it. So, how these are tools that I use to reproduce it. I used uh, Chrome Dev Tools most of the times. So I won't be um, talking now of how wonderful the tool is and how much you can do it with it or how to open it or something. This is something you can easily Google. You can ask Google to help you with that. But I'll make an overview of tools in general. So, the reason why I use Chrome Dev Tools because you have all the information of what is happening there uh, on uh, your page. And you can emulate the experience of your users. You can set a device there so you can pretend to be, for example, uh, iPhone 12 or Motorola uh, G4. This is the device that uh, Google is using for to run page speed and size, for example. Or you can pretend to be a huge retina display or something. You can throttle connection. You have, um, for example, you can choose. Uh, um, you can see all the assets, all the requests, uh, all the requests done on your website, and then you can choose uh, images, CSS files, JavaScript files, fonts, and to see everything separately. And it's very easy to identify the bottlenecks with this tool. You can just, for example, choose image images and then you can sort, you have sizes there, you can sort by size and immediately you can see that I have a huge image on this uh, page and it's loading, it's not lazy loaded for example, it's loading um, uh, above the fold and it's blocking other resources. It's easy to do it uh, with uh, this tool. There is <laughs> Another one that I use a lot, it's Core Web Vitals Chrome extension by Eddie Asmani. It's just an overlay in your uh, browser. So once you uh, load the page, it will measure your results right now. And the important thing that it will immediately show you the comparison to Core Web Vitals. It will say, okay, your page is loaded now in one, 0.2 seconds. It's compared such and such to users on your website. It's. Uh, I'm really sorry it's not visible uh, what's written there, but it will say, for example, it's uh, this experience um, uh, re reflect the uh, experience of 12% of users of your website. So this way, like by throttling connection, by altering devices, um, by doing all this and running Core Web Vitals uh, Chrome extension, you can actually replicate the experience that your users have um, on your website. Then there is another one. There, there is inbuilt Chrome Web Vitals tool uh, in Chrome Dev Tools. Are there too many words? Uh, there is an inbuilt one in Chrome and DevTools that I'm not using uh, because um, third-party tool, the, the extension that I showed before by Eddie Asmani, it's uh, getting updated more often. It's up to date. It reflects real, real thing, and this one is not, especially when uh, when the issue is with the uh, layout shift. So I'm not using it, but I want to mention it because uh, it might become better at some point. Um, the next one, uh, 
this one uh, I like very much. It's called waterfall.dev. Full thing. It will show all mm, how all assets on your page are loaded um, by types, images, fonts, CSS, uh, everything. And you can see what is related. It will give you recommendations. What what is related? What is impacting? Actually, it will give actual recommendations. What is impacting? LCP, CLS, and uh, you'll have recommendations right there. And it has nice interface for quick tests. I like to use it a lot. I don't know why, maybe a month ago, uh, it stopped working properly. Um, it's just, uh, it's not a huge team behind it, it's just one person, and I hope that they will fix it to be working soon, and I want to get to give a shout out to this tool because I re really adore it. And then there is another the one that I use a lot, it's called webpagetest.org. I think in my every talk I mention it. Uh, this is a cool tool. <clears throat> it's still a lab tool, but it has a lot of settings uh, to replicate the user's experience. You can choose uh, the device, the location, the screen resolution. Uh, you can choose uh, how many runs you want to, to do, how many, um, if you want to test first view only, because you know, sometimes when you, um, open the website first time, it might be loading slower than if you open the, the same very page the next time because it gets saved in your browser cache, right? So all the things, it's very, very detailed. All the things can be set there and you can run tests there very and replicate, replicate user experience very similar to what actual users on your website have. And it will have a uh, waterfall as well. Everything is uh, very detailed in that waterfall. You can see render blocking resources. It's a very cool tool. Now, we answer, if we can answer the question, uh, am I able to replicate it in lab? If we were able to replicate it in lab, this is like, we are almost there, we almost solved the problem. After we really replicated it in lab, we need to note in which tool we did so, with which settings, uh, and uh, under what conditions. For example, um, for example, I have a slide for that. For example, um, the issue is, that's what we defined before, uh, largest contentful pane on mobile is uh, like, uh, this and this uh, number, three seconds, for example, is not passing. Uh, and I am able to reproduce it with such and such tool. For example, I am able to reproduce it with a web page test, running tests from, for example, it's a website in uh, Australia, and uh, most of the users are using fast, um, uh, fast mobile internet on their mobile phones. So I will be running tests from that location, uh, with uh, that settings from mobile uh, devices and uh, throttling the connection to re to replicate the connection that users have. And I'll note all this because this is my starting point from where I will try to improve things and to which I will be comparing after I do something. Two I used to investigate the cause uh, in 90% of uh, scenarios is waterfall. This, it might look a little bit overwhelming, this thing that is happening here. It just showing, it just looks like this. If you have a second monitor next to you, it's very easy to use, it's fun to use, it's uh, very informative. And um, there are a lot of good resources that you can Google and find how to read waterfall, how to use waterfall. If you learn to do it once, this is it. Like, you know, performance now. Um, so what I will be using most of the times is waterfall. And yes, seriously. <laughs> There is, uh, there is no other way to identify the specific problem. So if you're a developer, learn how to read waterfall. If you are the person who is hiring developers, it's just for you to know that they need to know this because there is no other way. It's only guessing game. If, if it's not waterfall reading, it's only guessing game with performance or other ways. Uh, and the important thing is to use waterfall in that 
tool where you were able to replicate the issue. So if you are not able to replicate the issue with Chrome DevTools, for example, but you were able to replicate the issue with another tool with web page test, uh, you should be looking at waterfall there and to see what's happening for these users on their devices, on their connections there. In other 10% of uh, the cases, um, like 90% of the issues are always front end. And only 10% can be connected to backend or server related issues. Uh, that's from my experience. And for those, I will be using New Relic and Query Monitor. New Relic is a third party tool, it has connection to WordPress. Um, so uh, you connect to your website, and then you can see it's uh, too small. I'm sorry. Uh, and there you can see every single request made to database and made to um, other websites. So you can go, you can see which plugin, which uh, theme function is doing what, what response they're receiving, how long does it take. Uh, you can see not only the list of slow queries of, or something, but specifically who is doing, what is doing this and where and why. You can track everything in your relic. And uh, Query Monitor is a WordPress plugin. It's um, a little bit lighter um, to read through and to see the results. And it's easy to use because it's just WordPress plugin. Um, for, it can show you slow queries, it can show you errors. Um, it might be helpful if your website depends on third parties um, content, for example, it requests, uh, it's a reseller website that is requesting information from the reseller website uh, to um, show it on your site. And if those requests are going slow, they might be listed there <clears throat> in, um, um, in one of the sections. You can see scripts there, CSS, like there, are, there, 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 there is tone and information there in Query Monitor. But again, Backend issues with WordPress are not um, that um, common to be affecting core web vitals and performance. Much more usual thing that it's just front end and you need to read waterfall. Okay, so um, after we define the problem that we are trying to fix um, uh, LCP on mobile on, for these kinds of URLs, after we were lucky to, our next step will be what impacting um, the most. So you open, gotcha. Uh, so uh, you look for and you try to figure out what is impacting the website performance the most. And you have a list of things, a list of thoughts. What I'm trying to do next, I, I'm trying to answer the question, if I'm about to fix just one thing on this website, what thing there it would be? And to define that thing, I would um, see what seems to be making the most significant impact, what takes less of my time to resolve, and what doesn't seem to be introducing more problems that I had before. So I'm just um, targeting the low hanging fruits. If it's uh, quick and easy, why not? And I always hope for better. And if not, we can go to, to the next. So, as a result, you will have this hypothesis uh, that you're going to check. So, uh, LCP on mobile, this is my thought for this website. Uh, LCP on mobile is mainly affected by such and such. This is just an example, of course. Uh, I have the thought that icon phones are impacting LCP on mobile. And by re replacing these icon phones and mm, uh, stop them from being render blocking, I can improve LCP. It I can think about how long it will take me, how much of my effort it needs, and then I will decide, yeah, it's, it's worth trying, it's worth, do, it's worth doing. And then I will do it. And I will note under which conditions I was able to replicate this. So this is the time 
where we actually apply the fixes. Those recommendations uh, in uh, PageSpeed Insights, there will be tons of them. There might be a recommendation that you need, there might be not a recommendation, there, it might be absent there. So only on this stage, I will be applying actually fixes, and on this stage, uh, it's, uh, it makes absolutely sense to ask Google. I tried to uh, ask ChatGPT about the things. It doesn't know very much yet, but I think it's getting there. But I think it's uh, the, good, uh, the good start. We, I think we will we'll be able to ask ChatGPT about this. How do I do so-and-so? For example, how do I uh, convert all my images to next-gen uh, formats? How do I convert all my images? images from uh, PNG or HPEC to WebP, and it will recommend something. At this point, AI or Google is very helpful. So, uh, the process of solving the problem uh, is to identify what seems to be impacting, to make a hypothesis. Hypothesis, sorry. Uh, if I were to fix just one thing on this website, what that would be? and then apply the fix and measure results after. You had your, your numbers before, lab numbers before, you applied the fix and then you measure them after. If what you did fixed it in lab, this is it, this is it. Like you, you were able to replicate the issue, you fixed it in lab, it's good now. There is nothing else you should be doing now. You should wait for Core Web Vitals to be updated. Sometimes it's uh, three, four weeks uh, on the websites. They don't get, have enough traffic. But on the websites that are popular, it might take uh, four, five, six days to update. And you will have the answer if you did the right thing uh, very soon. So check your Core Web Vitals after some time. And uh, if you see the progress there, good. If no, then iterate the, pro uh, the process. But uh, you are still not passing. Iterate the process. One or maybe two things that you think that impact the most, fix them in lab. Make sure that in lab you are passing. And then just wait for the update. Um, yeah, this is my main point. Don't do more than needed. I'm a very lazy person. <laughs> so to get your core web vitals passing, don't do things, solve a problem. Then solve the problem, only that problem that needs to be solved. And don't waste any time, any of your effort on trying to solve problems that are not problems at all and they don't need to be solved. Kami was uh, giving a great talk yesterday that is called It's About Time. If you did miss it, uh, I highly recommend it to watch the recording. It's about uh, time planning, time management, how to use your time wisely. But I think the main point was that to save time when you get back your time on what you spend it. If we save time, we need to know why you... Everyone has family, friends, and good things to do, except of work. So my main idea with this talk is uh, to say that you don't need to go and do all the work and spend all your life in just checking the boxes. There is a point where it's good enough, and if you identify the problem properly, if you were able to reproduce it in lab, if you were able to fix it in lab, this is it. Don't spend more time on it than it's needed. Uh, ah, uh, because uh, of the um, work I do, I'm not able to demonstrate my work projects. That's why I regularly ask people to suggest their websites for public analysis that I can use for videos and for talks and for stuff. Um, if you want to suggest your website for public analysis, you're welcome to use this form and my, I might uh, do it publicly, get a feedback from me, I will get a website that uh, I can share. Thank you all. This is how you can reach to me. Uh, the slides for this talk will be available on WordCamp Phoenix uh, website soon, I think. Uh, thank you very much.